Hey, I'm Jeff and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you all my anthuriums that I currently have in my collection and I'm going to start off with my uh, one of my top wishlist plants, the Anthurium Rogel. This is also one of my most expensive plants. I think I paid around $140. I found this on Facebook Marketplace and this is ultimately one of my biggest fails as an Anthurium owner as well. When I bought it, it was earlier in the spring, it came in uh, water, it was uh, water rooted. It had one massive leaf, uh, a large thick beefy stem, and then a ton of water roots. When I transitioned it to a nice chunky aeroid mix, it rotted really fast. The roots uh, developed root rot. So I pulled it out of the pot. Um, basically all the roots were just falling off. So I had to clean it up, I snipped them all off. I snipped a leaf off and I propagated this in perlite and it's doing absolutely wonderful. It is now getting this one gorgeous leaf. It's still sizing up, it's getting larger, and I just absolutely love the, uh, the deep red kind of purplish color with the lime green veins. Um, it's just absolutely stunning. When I did propagate this, I actually chopped it up into four sections. So I had uh, kind of the top cutting I put in perlite and then I had, uh, or I made three other little chunks that I put in my perlite prop box. I'm relieved that I was able to save this plant in perlite and now I'm getting potentially four uh, plants in the future here. But uh, yeah, like I said, this is my, probably my favorite anthurium right now. I wanted that large massive leaf, that's my goal. And I think that's everybody's goal is just to get those uh, large massive anthurium leaves. And like I said, I'm just super excited that I was able to save this one. And now it's giving me this almost flawless leaf. It just has one little uh, kind of deformity right there, but uh, overall it's doing fantastic. It's just on the floor underneath my Soltec Rolite and it's actually on a heat mat as well. I'm watering this probably every maybe three, four or five days kind of thing. I don't let the perlite get uh, completely dry. I'll, uh, I'll just soak it once the perlite gets maybe 50% dry. And so far it's liking that location and this treatment. This next one is my latest acquisition. This is the Anthurium Hookery, and this is the variegated form. Uh, I picked this up a couple days ago from one of my local plant shops, and they actually got these in quite a while ago, and I've seen them on their Instagram page a few times. After doing a quick Google search and seeing just how gorgeous the, uh, the mature large leaves are, I scooped this one up, and it is, or it was, $39. So $40 I paid for this plant, and I'm uh, right now just letting it uh, kind of acclimate and uh, quarantine in my bathroom. It's underneath a grow light. I really didn't know too much about these and to be honest, I still don't, but I know they have kind of like an upright leaf structure, almost like a crown. And yeah, I'm just really looking forward to seeing this one get those uh, larger mature leaves. This actually gets quite large um, according to some pictures on uh, the internet. <laughs> The internet. So far what I know about this plant is it's actually a really low maintenance anthurium. It actually doesn't need a ton of humidity as well and it needs kind of that medium light. So I'm expecting this one to do very well downstairs here underneath all my grow lights. And yeah, I'm really happy that I was able to pick one of these up before it was sold out. The variegation on the leaves is just, uh, yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful plant and I love the the, the leaf structure um, when it gets a little bit larger. I did have to cut off a couple leaves as they were uh, yellowing and dying back. They were just a little bit smaller. This next one I'm gonna actually hold here just because of how large it is. This is the Anthurium brownie eye and this is definitely one of my favorite Anthuriums. It gets these absolutely uh, large massive leaves. I won this plant off of an Instagram uh, plant store page, uh, I think about a year ago, maybe a year and a half. And it's put out, I think three leaves since owning this plant. This is the, um, the last, like newest, largest leaf and it's actually getting a new one right now that is still sizing up and hardening off. This one's just on the floor right behind me here, uh, kind of beside my Monstera. It loves that location and yeah, I just love the leaf shape and size. There's nothing crazy about this leaf, like it's not uh, you know super dramatic, it doesn't have very vibrant veins. It's the uh, size of the leaf as well as the petiole. Like look at these stems, like they are so long. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a really easy, fast growing anthurium in my opinion. It has not really given me any issues in regards to um, like low humidity. I'm not getting any crispy edges. The leaves are always looking fantastic. If you've been wanting to get into anthuriums, this is one that I recommend. It's really easy to care for. It's in this absolutely gorgeous Mexican pottery pot, which I got from uh, Winners a couple of years ago. And it's actually just in an insert. I have it in just a plastic nursery pot. 
And lately I've been top dressing all of my uh, anthuriums with sphagnum moss just on top and it is actually in a fairly chunky aeroid mix as well. Whenever the sphagnum moss gets really dry and crispy, I know that most likely the soil is gonna be dry. So that's how I determine whether my anthuriums need a water or not. This is actually really difficult to get back in its spot here. I just don't wanna damage any of the other plants or the leaves. So it goes right here. I have a monstera, come on. I have a monstera leaf that is unfurling here. So I don't want to, here, come on. So I have a couple of these leaves. Uh, where are you? This one, I have draped over my monstera there. Okay, so that is looking decent. So yeah, here it is down here. Just got it right behind the monstera, or right beside it. I got uh, those couple leaves just kind of draped over this uh, monstera leaf. And here's my newest monster leaf that's unfurling. I'm hoping it has the holes or fenestrations. Here's the last uh, leaf that it gave me. So again, I'm hoping it's larger than this one and it's definitely taking its time. It's got a little like damage spot at the bottom, which, oh well, that happens, but yeah. Where are you? Yeah, that pot's tucked down there. It's filling in the area really nice. I'm liking how this is, uh, how this corner is turning out. This next one is a cross between the Queen Anthurium and a Magnificum. This is one of my more newer ones. I think I've only had it for maybe a month or two. It's transitioned really well. When I got it as plant mail, um, the leaves were absolutely flawless and it's only gotten just a little bit of kind of crisp, uh, crispiness at the edges here. So it's done a really good job at acclimating it to my house conditions. I do have a humidifier going right now. Uh, all of my Anthuriums are downstairs uh, receiving 100% uh, grow lights. There's no natural sunlight down here. They love that consistency of light. I have them all on timers for like 14 hours. So it will get those really large massive leaves uh, of the Magnificum and then it will have a little bit more of a longer uh, slender leaf that you get from the Queen Anthurium. It is in sphagnum moss right now. I particularly don't like leaving my, uh, any of my plants in moss long term. I like to pull them out and put them in a nice chunky aeroid mix and then top dress with the sphagnum moss. I feel that works best for me um, with my conditions downstairs here. Um, otherwise, yeah, what a beautiful plant and I'm looking forward to, like I said, getting those large massive leaves. This next one is quite a unique anthurium. When it is in its juvenile form, it'll have a very classic or typical anthurium leaf, but as it grows and matures, it gets these uh, almost like finger-like fan type leaves. This is the newest leaf as of like a couple months ago, and it's absolutely beautiful. This is the anthurium pedato radiatum. I'm not entirely sure of how it grows, like if the next leaf is gonna have uh, kind of like five fingers or does it gain one with each new leaf? I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna have to obviously keep my eye on it and hopefully it gets a new leaf here soon. I'm looking forward to getting obviously larger leaves but more of those uh, like finger-like or fan-like leaves. Uh, you can pick these up for pretty cheap right now. I think uh, I've seen them like in the ranges of like $40, $50. I think that's what I paid for this one was $50 as part of a uh, plant mail. Um, it, yeah, it came with these two leaves and this leaf is the one that um, pr was produced in my care. And yeah, it's in terracotta. It's uh, top dressed with sphagnum moss. I watered this a couple days ago. Still a little bit squishy, it's not crunchy. I'm gonna probably give it another few days and then I'll give it some water. As I'm going through and selecting the next plant to show you guys, I'm quickly realizing that I actually have quite a bit of anthuriums and a couple of years ago I was uh, absolutely petrified of these plants and now I have uh, or I'm getting a pretty large collection as I'm just noticing now. Uh, this next one is the Anthurium villanorum. This one is a little bit different than the rest of my anthuriums. It's quite dramatic. Um, the leaves are absolutely striking. It's got very prominent uh, white uh, veins on the leaves. Again, it's nothing crazy about the, the leaf itself. Um, it's kind of more of a narrow, longer leaf. Um, but what I've noticed with this one, it's, it's honestly really similar to like, uh, like a homolamina or like a schismatoglottis. 
when you miss that small little watering window, this thing just droops like it flopped over the other day. A couple days ago, this leaf was, I thought I was gonna lose it. This is the newest leaf. I thought I was gonna lose it because um, all the leaves were literally drooped over the edge of the pot. I wish I took a picture, um, I didn't, but um, I gave it some water. I just soaked the soil and it bounced back like nothing happened. And the only imperfections it's ever given me are just these like little crispy tips right here. So I'm gonna assume this one does not require like a ton of humidity, just regular house humidity I think would be fine for this one. Obviously they appreciate the higher humidity and it might grow a little bit faster or it might get larger leaves, I'm not too sure, but <laughs> the watering is the, is the only issue. So don't let it like get completely dry. It'll be fine in the morning and then you come by like in the afternoon and the leaves will be flopped over. So quite dramatic but it bounces back really quick. I don't know why the newest leaf, uh, this is as of like maybe a couple months ago, it's much smaller. So maybe maybe it uh, it's still adjusting uh, to the conditions that I have downstairs here. But um, here is the uh, largest leaf, here's the newest leaf, and obviously it's much smaller than that. So not too sure why it just gave me this puny little leaf, but uh, it looks fine. It's uh, basically flawless, it looks perfect. So. Anthurium villanorum, beautiful. Okay, so I'm starting to chip away at my Anthurium collection. I still have quite a bit to show you guys, but I'm gonna show you this absolutely gorgeous Anthurium crystallinum. It's about the size of my hand. Here is the newest leaf. There's a lot going on with this plant right now. Uh, it's got a, uh, a beautiful, gorgeous, large leaf. Here is the newest leaf. It's still uh, upsizing or it's still growing. And then here is one leaf that is uh, dying back. I was really excited to see the size of this leaf when it uh, finished growing. And I'm really excited to see uh, the size that this one ends up being. Uh, this leaf, I'm probably gonna cut off here in a couple of days, but uh, again, uh, a really common anthurium that you can probably find for pretty cheap now. Uh, I think you can, you know, anywhere from like $20, $30 kind of thing. Even on like Facebook Marketplace, people are selling these like hotcakes. <laughs> so uh, one of my favorite anthuriums for sure. So far, it's been pretty easy to grow. I haven't really had too many issues with it. Same with this one. Just a little bit of a kind of a, uh, a yellowing kind of crispy edge down there. So definitely related to either watering or humidity. If you are looking to get into anthuriums, this is another good one. Um, yeah, it just looks gorgeous all the time. This next little guy is a cross between the Anthurium Magnificum and Crystallinum. I don't know what it is about this one, but I just absolutely love it. It's easily in my top five anthuriums. The new leaves, they always come out just absolutely perfect and they have very prominent veins, uh, very like silver, almost sparkly veins on this one. It's absolutely gorgeous. I think I bought this one in a plant auction, so I can't even remember what I paid for it probably like 30 40 dollars it was uh, pretty small but it's uh, since gotten uh, i think two or three leaves on this one so i would consider it a fairly fast growing anthurium in regards to how anthuriums grow in my experience anyways um, yeah and each new leaf like these two newest leaves are just absolutely gorgeous so i'm looking forward to when they get those large massive leaves and like personally, I love the crystallinum. I love the shape of it. It's such a beautiful anthurium and it's popular for a reason. So this is one of my favorite anthuriums and it's just, yeah, I can't, I can't say enough about these leaves. They're just gorgeous. These next two, and yes, I have two of them. These are the Anthurium clarinervium. Again, another very popular variety, and you can basically find them for pretty cheap now. Uh, this is the original one that I've had for quite some time, and I think it's only given me uh, one new leaf. No, sorry, two new leaves. So this is one that grew for me shortly after getting it, and it's a little deformed, so not, not the nicest leaf. Uh, this one came out pretty perfect, except it's just really small. Super slow growing in my opinion. This one, it came available at one of my local plant shops for pretty cheap. I think I paid $20 for it. It looks like it's got kind of like multiple stems in here. So I just picked this one up just to see if I could get this one to grow maybe a little bit faster than this one. Uh, I don't know, I was planning on maybe doing some experiments, some propagation. Uh, with this one in, in particular. These next two are the Anthurium forgetii and their classic feature is that they don't have any lobes at the top. So basically it's just a, a round top. It's very much like a, uh, like a water drop, raindrop. So this is the original plant that I had, the Forget AI. This is what I bought it for, and I think it was like $40 or something like that. When I bought this one, it was off the uh, plant auction website. It was unsure, but it was sold to me as a Crystal Hope. 
um, as the new leaves developed. I don't think it had a full leaf on it. Um, as the leaves developed, it's clearly uh, got the no lobes, round top, so this is a forgetii as well. I don't know if I'm necessarily gonna keep both. I might plot them up together. I might do some experiments. I might make some more, uh, learn to propagate and that sort of thing. I'm hoping that uh, some of my anthuriums will start to flower so that I can cross pollinate and, and kind of learn how to uh, make uh, anthurium seeds, which yeah, I'm just hoping to learn off of these plants. So two forgetty eyes. It's such a, a cool looking leaf shape for sure. And here's the newest leaf on this one and yeah, it doesn't look like any new growth popping up from these guys. You can find these more and more at uh, different plant shops for a pretty affordable price. And yeah, they look good. This one's got a little bit of a cr crispy leaf here, but I'm okay with that one. This has a little bit of a crispy edge right here because when it was um, forming, it was actually resting on the edge of the terracotta. So I think the terracotta pot was a little bit wet at the time, or it was uh, a little bit uh, damp and it just kind of rotted this little section of the leaf. Uh, this newest one, I've been trying to keep it off of the edge of the pot just so it doesn't get that uh, kind of crispy edge or deformity there. And so far, it looks like it's okay, but it's, it's resting on it, on the uh, edge there. But uh, so far it's been looking okay. So yeah, the Anthurium Forgetii. This is the Anthurium Quera Malens. Uh, it's kind of out of control right now. It's in a small pot. I haven't had this for very long, but look at this root. It's just growing out the bottom. I want to pot it up in something a little bit larger, and it's got this like large stem that I'm going to have to add some sort of support stake to so that it continues to grow uh, upright here. But look at this leaf, it's huge. Um, it does have a little bit of, it looks like signs of pest damage, so I'm uh, suspecting uh, possibly spider mites. I'm gonna have to uh, spray this plant down and, and just kind of give it a little bit of a once over. Otherwise, I don't really know too much about this plant. Look at these petioles, like just like the brownie eye, just a super long petiole, one kind of weird, awkward stem. And I did cut uh, a few of the, I'm not even in the video. I did cut a few of the lower leaves off as they were looking much more haggard than this one is. You can see it's got some brown edges, but uh, what an absolutely gorgeous leaf. Again, nothing like super striking about it. It's just a solid green leaf, um, very faint kind of white veins, but it's the size of the leaf that I absolutely love. So this one, it's going to be uh, needing a little bit of care, a little bit of TLC. I'm gonna put it in something different and give it a support stake to grow up. This one was a little bit more expensive and I did get it shipped. Uh, I think this was about $100. This one might be an experiment plant at some point because I'm gonna chop this stem up and see if I can make more of these uh, Quera Malens, I believe it's called. Okay, on to the next. I think I have a few more. Bear with me, it's gonna be a long video. I'm just realizing that, yeah, I have a lot of anthuriums. I have two more plants to show you guys. This one is just a very basic, long, narrow leaf. Uh, this is the Marmoratum, Anthurium Marmoratum. Uh, this one is showing some signs of pest damage as well. Maybe some spider mites, uh, but you can see it's looking a little bit rough on, the, uh, on this leaf. Uh, this one's not too bad, um, but I'm definitely gonna have to uh, spray this one down and uh, remove it from the sphagnum moss here as well. I just have a kind of long list of plant chores. I actually have quite a few plants in moss right now that I wanna pull out and uh, put in some nice chunky um, aeroid mixture. But um, yeah, I really don't know much about this one. I haven't had time to do much research on this one. Um, it's surviving right now. It's not looking the greatest. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully it grows uh, some more mature leaves down the road, but obviously I'll be providing some updates, so I just won't hit myself with this one. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to move on to the last one, which is it? Nope, that's show that one. Okay, the last one is the Anthurium Magnificum. This is just the regular variety. It's not crossed with anything. This is the second leaf that it's gotten since I've had it. Same with the uh, Forgetii. This one was just resting on the edge of the pot like that and it actually deformed the leaves. So what I've been doing, when I notice that they're resting on the pot, is I will actually just stick something um, like on the sphagnum moss just to kind of prop it up a little bit just so it's not hanging off the edge. Oops, I just ripped it even more. Um, but otherwise, like it would have been a, a perfect leaf if it wasn't for that little bit of uh, physical damage. Uh, this one turned out really nice. So I'm happy with this one. And I'm just noticing that it's getting another small little 
growth point at the bottom. So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. I appreciate the support. If you wanna go check out more houseplant content, click this video right here. Otherwise, thanks again for watching. Take care, bye.